you have an update um, on the, it's, it's so hard to segue. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to do that. But but you do have an update on the situation, uh, the the uh, mass, the so-called mass rape investigation published by the New York Times in December. We wanted to, we didn't want to revisit this, but we have to. Um, tell us about what's, uh, what's uh, the updates here. Yeah, first to remind our viewers, uh, a month ago, the New York Times published an article with the headline, Screams Without Words, How Hamas Weaponized Sexual Violence on October 7th. And it was supposedly the result of a two-month-long investigation led by Pulitzer Prize-winning reporter Jeffrey Gettleman. Uh, the Times claimed to present evidence that Hamas fighters raped Israeli women on October 7th and that, quote, the attacks against women were not isolated events, but part of a broader pattern of gender-based violence. But as we showed on our January 3rd live stream, the Times' so-called investigation was deeply flawed, and I would go as far as to say fraudulent. People can watch that segment on our YouTube channel. Yeah, and we can link to that. Um, but I know that uh, some staffers inside the New York Times uh, itself have reached similar conclusions to the one that we and other independent outlets have reached. Is that right? That's right. On January 28th, The Intercept revealed that The Times pulled a high-profile episode of its podcast, The Daily, that was based on uh, Gettleman's mass rapes article. According to The Intercept, the decision not to air the episode was taken quote, amid a furious internal debate about the strength of the paper's original reporting on the subject. And I want to know that The Daily is more than just an ordinary podcast. It is broadcast every weekday on public radio stations around the United States. So millions of people hear it. It's very influential. According to The Intercept, the episode was supposed to air on January 9th, but as criticism of Gettleman's reporting grew internally and externally, the Daily shelved the original script and put a hold on the episode. Now, they then wrote a new script, one that was, according to The Intercept, allow, that allowed for uncertainty and asked open-ended questions that were absent from the original article. In other words, The Daily was going to cast doubt on The Times' own reporting. <laughs> but even that new script uh, remains the subject of significant controversy within the Times newsroom and has yet to air. According to The Intercept, some New York Times staffers fear another caliphate-level journalistic debacle. Right, and uh, remind our viewers what that is. Right. Caliphate was a sensational multi-part podcast by New York Times reporter Rukmini Kalamaki. It was released in 2018. It purported to be the story of a young Canadian Muslim who was radicalized and went on to Syria to join ISIS and commit a number of gruesome atrocities that were described in detail in the podcast. But the, ma the man turned out to be a total fraud. He made everything up. And the New York Times ignored many of the red flags that his story was fake. The Times ended up retracting the podcast, and it was obviously a huge embarrassment. This malpractice is not harmless. The podcast undoubtedly fed uh, anti-Muslim fear-mongering in both Canada and the U.S. by boosting the notion that young Muslims in these countries present a grave danger. And I would say that the New York Times is reporting of Israeli atrocity propaganda since October 7, such as the claims of mass rape, is also extremely harmful because it provides Israel with a justification for and distraction from its genocidal crimes against Palestinians in Gaza. And it really seems to me that the New York Times as an institution has not learned the lessons from the caliphate debacle, although it appears that at least some of its staff have, which is why they are now raising the alarm over the Gettleman article. Have there been any uh, New York Times editors who have responded to this controversy over the mass rapes article? Uh, you know, is anyone taking this seriously from inside? One New York Times staffer told The Intercept, quote, there seems to be no self-awareness at the top. The staffer added that Gettleman's story, quote, deserved more fact-checking and much more reporting, 
all basic standards applied to countless other stories, end quote. But instead of assigning editors to review Gettleman's work with some objectivity, it appears the Times has allowed him to investigate himself. <laughs> Sources, yeah, it sounds familiar. Yeah, it Sources does. at the Times told The Intercept that Gettleman was assigned to write a follow-up story and gather evidence to support his original claims that were in the story back in December. Right. Amazing. Um and and that article that Gettleman did uh, investigating himself has now been published. Does it resolve any of the problems with his original quote unquote report? Or did he come up with any new evidence? Is there anything now to back up the 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 spurious claims that have been debunked? <laughs> yeah, it was published on January twenty ninth. And while it does contain new unverified claims and a lot of spin and evasion, there is nothing in it that you could call new evidence. Mm -hmm. Gettleman really tries to skirt around or simply ignores the key problems with his reporting that we and others have pointed out. Right. Convenient. Um, what are some of those key problems? Well, first, there is the issue of Gal Abdush. She is an Israeli woman who was killed on October 7th. In his original article, Gettleman portrays her as the central victim of this so-called pattern of rape allegedly carried out by Hamas. But several members of Gal Abdush's family pushed back very strongly against Gettleman's claims. They say that there is no proof that Gal Abdush was raped, and they said that the Times manipulated them. They had no idea that the story Gettleman was working on was going to claim that Abdush uh, was raped. Yeah. Gettleman provides absolutely no new evidence on this and actually has to acknowledge that, quote, family members have denied or cast doubt on the claims that she was raped. He then asserts that critics have used the comments of Gal Abdush's family, quote, to assert falsely that the family had renounced the article, end quote, but that is not false. Family members did renounce the claims in Gettleman's article, and Gettleman has come up with no new evidence to back them up. And Gal Abdush's mother said she only learned of the claim that her daughter had been sexually assaulted from the, from the New York Times article itself. Atrocious. Um, in our previous segment on this, you pointed out how the four supposed eyewitnesses uh, to the alleged rapes each lacked credibility. Uh, you pointed out that their stories were inherently unlikely or even impossible, that there was a, a total lack of corroboration, including bodies and other physical and forensic evidence, um, or because the supposed eyewitnesses changed their stories over time. Um, does Gettleman address any of that in this new piece? He does address it, but only in a way that raises even more questions about his shoddy reporting, fraudulent reporting, I would yeah. say. For example, there's the case of Sapir, a woman who supposedly saw Hamas fighters gang rape and murder five women, then cut off the breast of one of them and start tossing it around like a ball. She also claimed she saw Hamas fighters prancing around with severed heads of, of three women lifted up over their heads. As we pointed out previously, her incredible atrocity tale came with no corroboration. Where were the severed heads? Where were the headless bodies? Where was all the blood and DNA? All this horror could not have happened while leaving no trace behind. Now, Gettleman makes this claim, citing Israeli authorities. I quote, the police also said they found Sapir's bag where she said she had been hiding and women's clothing near where she said the rapes occurred, and three severed heads were found farther away near the bodies of assailants in military fatigues, Israeli officials said, without providing more detail, end quote. None of these details were in his original story, and it all sounds very convenient. I've been following this issue very closely, and this is the first time in almost four months that we hear it claimed that this sort of physical evidence exists. But why didn't Gettleman insist on seeing crime scene photos or any other physical evidence? Again, there's nothing new here except more claims and assertions from the authorities of the same regime that is perpetrating genocide in Gaza, claims that neither we nor Gettleman can verify 
but which Gettleman and the New York Times are happy to regurgitate, apparently without a, a shred of skepticism. And then there's the second and the only other eyewitness to the same alleged incident, a man called Yura Carroll. As we po pointed out, in an earlier account, Carroll told Israeli media he did not see the rape, but only that Sapir had told him about it. But in Gettleman's original article, Carroll is quoted as saying he saw these events with his own eyes. In the new article, Gettleman does not challenge Carroll with his previous contradictory statements, but simply allows him to reassert his claims. Again, absolutely nothing new. I should point out that neither Sapir nor Carol were named in the earlier account in Haaretz where the second witness says he did not see the rape. But there's enough similarity that we can conclude with confidence that this is the same alleged uh, incident. Uh, there was another supposed eyewitness to a separate alleged rape, a man called Roz Cohen. Um, and last time we talked about this, you pointed out how Cohen's story had changed repeatedly since October 7th. Does Gettleman address that? If so, how does he address it? Yeah, that's right. We and other outlets have pointed out how Cohen's accounts have, have kept changing over time, including how in, in his initial statements about October 7th, Cohen made no mention of rape. And now this is the laughable excuse that Gettleman comes up with to cover up for Cohen's shifting narratives. Gettleman writes, quote, asked this month why he had not mentioned rape at first, Mr. Cohen cited the stress of his experience and said in a text message that he had not realized then that he was one of the few surviving witnesses. He declined to be interviewed again, saying he was working to recover from the trauma he suffered. End quote. And Gettleman also tries to appeal to authority to cover up for Cohen's evasions and lies. He quotes a person he describes as a Ukrainian lawyer specializing in international law, including crimes against women. And this lawyer says that a variation in the testimony given by the eyewitness, quote, does not necessarily invalidate the witness's experience. And she also puts Cohen's shifting story down to trauma. Uh, isn't that convenient? I guess it's a, a case of uh, what they say uh, online, trust me, bro. Yeah. And also notice that Gettleman claims that Cohen was, quote, one of the few surviving witnesses, end quote. It's always important to remind ourselves that Israeli authorities and Gettleman and lots of other media have been claiming all along that there was a pattern of rapes, a deliberate mass campaign of sexual violence as a weapon of war. And yet in his new article, Gettleman has not come up with any other examples in addition to the alleged cases he reported and which are simply not credible. There should be tons of witnesses and tons of evidence, including forensics and video, but there just isn't. Um, there is one more supposed eyewitness who is with Raz Cohen, a fashion designer named Shoam Guetta. Guetta claims he saw the same assault as Cohen, but there's no, nothing to corroborate it. Gettleman does not add anything new about Guetta, just repetition of what he claimed in the earlier article. But it's notable that Guetta has been a publicity seeker from the start. In the last few weeks, he's been deployed in Gaza with the Israeli army, and he posted this photo on Facebook where he actually advertises his collection, uh, his fashion collection called Gutos, on the wall of a house in Gaza. You can see that uh, photo here. I don't know what to say about that, um, other than absolutely despicable. Um, the Ali, the last time you talked about uh, how Gettleman relied to a large extent on Zaka, um, the, the Jewish extremist group that goes to crime scenes to collect bodies uh, or body parts for burials, but which even by its own admission has no expertise in forensics or pathology. I don't think they're even like officially licensed by any sort of like public health uh, body. Um, Zaka leaders and, and its personnel have lied repeatedly about what they saw on October 7th, um, including the completely debunked stories of burned children and a pregnant woman whose belly was sliced open, just um, these horrific uh, 
you know, fantasy myths. Um, does Gettleman explain in his new article why he relied on an organization, Zaka, that has lied so much and has a vested interest in these lies? No, Zaka is not even mentioned in Gettleman's new article. It appears there was no way for him to spin away his egregious malpractice of relying on such an organization. So he just ignores the matter. Mm -hmm. It's really a fatal blow to his credibility. I suspect that Gettleman's shoddy effort to get himself off the hook is not going to silence the internal dissent within the New York Times and may even heighten it. After all, why is Gettleman being allowed to investigate himself to try to airbrush away his deceptions? And why are editors letting him do it? The New York Times, if it had a shred of integrity, would retract Gettleman's story completely. Yeah. Uh, Ali, is there anything else we should know about this? Well, I just want to add that The Intercept's reporting is very welcome, and their article goes into a lot more detail about The Times' institutional anti-Palestinian bias, much more than we have time to go into here. But I did find it disappointing that they did not give credit to those of us who did the heavy lifting to debunk Gettleman's story in particular and Israel's evidence-free claims of mass rape in general. Less surprisingly, Gettleman didn't link to us either. Uh, so I just want to give a shout out to Mondo Weiss in the gray zone. And there are others as well, uh, people who have used their uh, Twitter accounts to expose some of this. Because together, together with the electronic intifada, I think we have all done very important work on this. We'll cut this segment of the live stream as a separate video, and we'll be sure to include links in the description to some of those key articles on the collapsing mass rapes narrative uh, from all of these publications, uh, including, of course, the Electronic Intifada. Thank you so much, Ali, for that update, a uh, very necessary update. And um, yeah, and and... Sadly, we'll probably have to keep updating because the story as, will as, go away. Yeah, as Asa keeps saying, it is a bit like uh, all of these things are a bit like the fake Labour Party anti-Semitism crisis in the UK. You think you're done with it and then, then it just keeps coming back. Yeah, it's like whack-a-mole. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit like, leave a comment. These engagements help us with the YouTube algorithm and it helps us to get around Silicon Valley censorship as much as possible. It does make a difference. You can also support our journalism by going to electronicintifada.net and clicking on donate now. Thank you.